I'm Daniel Brown, and today's talk is about how to tell a story through shadow and light. In the first century AD, in his book Natural History, the Roman author Pliny the Elder recited a story about the origin of painting, which he said first began not with an object being represented, but with its shadow being drawn. The story was about a girl who was deeply in love with a young man who was about to leave for a very long time. And as a way to always have him with her, she traced his shadow upon the wall. The most important story that can be told through shadow and light is the story of the three-dimensionalization of form. And everything you need to know can be learned from an egg. The darkest core shading curves around the egg in an elliptical pathway, with mid-tone shading on both sides of the core shading. Closest to the light source, the mid-tone shade becomes light, with a bright highlight appearing near the middle. The lowest edge of the egg is illuminated with reflected light from the tabletop. The projected shadow of the egg is darkest immediately under the egg. This darkest projected shadow is called the umbra. Further away, the projected shadow lightens to become the penumbra, which is surrounded by a darker halo. Further away still, it becomes a diffuse shadow. This drawing by architect Aldo Rossi reveals another way to tell a story through shadow and light. By placing two forms next to one another, we can use the shadow of one form to unveil the three-dimensional form of the other. In this example, the projected shadow of the handle of the left coffee pot shows us that the right coffee pot is cylindrical. At the same time, notice how Rossi is using the one-third rule. He is also guiding our eye from warm color to cool color. The shading is never black. Instead, the shade and shadow are darker versions of the object upon which they fall. This drawing of two coffee pots by an architect also tells another story. The bent handle reads as a gateway, while the curved shadow of the straight handle reads as a shadow gateway. This drawing by master student Ryan Western reveals a third way to tell a story through shadow and light. When an object is drawn in plan, its projected shadow can unveil its form, enabling us to see both its plan and elevation simultaneously. Inverted reflections of the projected shadow can then be used to provide atmosphere. Another way to tell a story using projected shadow to unveil form is to only cast shadows for the story you wish to tell. In this plan drawing, the main concept is a long table that stretches through the space and passes through an opening in a wall. By selectively tracing only the cast shadows of the most important objects, the story appears. Notice how emphasis has been added by selectively applying warm shadows to the primary elements and cool shadows to the secondary elements of the story. In these drawings by artist Walter Pickler, you can see how the same concept of selectively applying shade and shadow can also be used in perspective, elevation, or sectional views. In these drawings by artist Jim Dine, shade and shadow are used discreetly to focus the drawing on the story he wishes to tell. Simultaneously, he uses shade and shadow to also establish atmosphere. In these two drawings, he effectively omits what is not important to his story, and he uses high contrast shading to focus our attention on what is most important to his tale. One of the most interesting ways to tell a story with shadow is to include the shadow of something that is outside the field of view. In this way, shadow can make the invisible visible. In this composition, by making the invisible visible, the student shows that she is using both plan and section view, as well as three different scales in the same image. Shadow can be used to convey stories about texture and materiality. In these compositions by student Daniela Pizzi, all the shading is done through textures, creating an evocative atmosphere that is drawn from her concept based on fabrics. In this watercolor image, the dampened texture of the paper adds atmosphere to the shading of the architecture. In this drawing, texture is created by white, 
placed over the graze as if the touch of the artist's hand was an important factor in the textures left behind. Shadows can be used to tell a story by contrasting architecture with its context, setting up dialogues between shadow patterns and contextual patterns. In this drawing by James Flynn, only the most important spaces of the story are shaded. In these drawings by Vigilism, the shadows of the architectural forms are in stark contrast with the context, enhancing the dominance of the architecture. In this drawing by student Tarly Brennan, the context is highly shaded rather than the architecture. The soft interior shading of the upper level leads our eye downward through the architecture to the earth below. And one of the most interesting ways to create atmosphere is to use reflected layers of shade, shadow, and light to tell a story. This drawing by artist Charles Scheeler deconstructs and then overlays the shadows for a dynamic effect. This render by Jason Jackson overlays shadows and highlights for a powerful atmospheric effect. There are three basic types of shadow. The umbra is an opaque shadow. The penumbra is a translucent shadow, which still allows us to see what lies below. The lightest shadow is a transparent shadow, which, for example, can be cast by a glass object or a window. This drawing by architectural illustrator Mark English uses opaque shadows for thick walls. He uses translucent shadows further away from the wall to avoid hiding important information. And in this case, he uses transparent shadows for the landscape to ensure that the emphasis remains on the architectural plan. As we have seen with shadow, there are also multiple types of shade. When a drawing is completed primarily in soft shade, for example, without any deep shadows, it attains very unique atmospheric qualities. This section of the Tara House by Studio Mumbai creates an atmosphere of soft tranquility by rendering the soil in the same shading as the architecture, blending them visually as one. No foundations are shown to further enhance the sense of architecture being integrated with the earth. Notice how this drawing applies the one-third rule, and how the light in the upper third leads our eye downward and into the architecture below. This plan of the Zachary House uses soft shade alone to create an atmosphere of simple elegance, while also referencing the touch of the artist's hand in the lines scribbled softly in the site. This perspective from a set of drawings called Room Series uses the blank page as a context to enhance the effect of the soft shades, inviting the architecture to emerge into the field of view. Notice how no lines are used, only shade. Provocative atmospheric qualities can also be created by using primarily deep shadow. In previous seminars, we have been introduced to the drawings of the École des Beaux-Arts. In this Beaux-Arts section of a mausoleum by Henri Le Brust, we can see how deep shadow dominates the composition. Le Brust's use of deep shadow emphasizes the atmosphere of the interior space and places it into a dialogue with the primal shadows between the boulders beyond. In this drawing called Battle of the Generic from the AA in London, only deep shadow and stark white are used. By using this graphic effect, the shadows of the buildings become more visually powerful than the architecture that casts them. This drawing by Bartlett student Steve Bauman is called Cemetery for Unknown Citizens. The shadows become deeper black the further they descend down into the lower recesses of the architecture. Notice how this image uses the one-third rule. In the upper third of the image, there are almost no deep shadows at all, whereas in the bottom third, the architecture is only revealed as deep shadow. Bright highlights can be used to reveal a compelling story in the same way as shade and shadow. This project by Alexander Dack's book explores the position of libraries in today's digital society. To tell this story, he creates graphical representation and images of the project in ways that metaphorically represent the filtering of information. He overlays different mixed media like analog model photos, digital 2D plans, 3D renders, and freehand sketches 
and then he inverts them to establish perspectives and sections composed of bright highlights. When telling a story with shade, shadow, and light, it is important to also establish atmosphere. In this drawing by student Brad Dobson, atmosphere is created by a combination of high contrast, texture, line, and soft color transformation from cool to warm. In these drawings by student Thomas Strange, atmosphere is created in the plan drawing by using a combination of texture and contrast, as well as by integrating hard line drawing with soft fluid sketching. In the section drawing of the same project, he creates atmosphere by incorporating high contrast textures and soft contrast textures. In these compositions by student Nicole Garner, atmosphere is created in plan and perspective by blurring, by using high contrast, and by intensifying the images at the one-third point. In this perspective drawing by student Nick O'Connell, the story is told by selecting an unexpected point of view. We look up at the composition from below, seeing opaque shadow penetrating the floor plane, while translucent shadow establishes the urban context in the distance. In this perspective drawing by John Fechtel, shade and shadow are used to focus the view on the concept rather than the literal design by making the framing device appear to float above the floor plane. Shade is then also used to frame the light in the distance while patterns are used to establish atmosphere. In this perspective drawing by student Max Wiles, the composition integrates both line and render drawings. Notice how projected shadow as well as shade are used to direct the eye to the one-third point of the composition. Shading is also used to add weight to the lower half of the image, creating balance. This composition by Bartlett student Benjamin Ferns was a winner of the 2015 RIBA's Sargent Medal for Excellence in Drawing. Titled The Apostolic Library, it tells a story of a stimulating environment of anamorphic illusion, fiber optic projection, and sensorial engagements. In order to tell this tale, the student breaks the rules of traditional drawing. You will see from the axonometric that his composition includes both plan, section, and elevation views in the same drawing. By observing the sun angles used for shading, you will notice that different components of the architectural design are shown at different times of day. In this animated composition by Alexander McQueen, shadow and light are inverted. Shadow becomes light, and light becomes shadow. This brings us to the end of today's seminar. To help you reflect further on what you have learned, let's look more closely at four compositions. In this composition by student Rufus Knight, reflect upon the directional focal lines of the overall composition and how they guide the eye to tell a story. How is atmosphere created by shade, shadow, and light? Pause the video to give yourself time to reflect on the answer, and then begin the video once again to discuss a second composition. In this composition by student Nick O'Connell, reflect upon how shadow makes the invisible visible, how different types of shadow are used to tell the story, and how atmosphere is created. Pause the video to give yourself time to reflect on the answer, and then begin the video once again to discuss a third composition. In this composition by student Mayo Kano, reflect upon how light, shade, and shadow are used to focus the composition and guide the eye to tell a story. Pause the video to give yourself time to reflect on the answer, and then begin the video once again to discuss a fourth composition. In this composition by Benjamin Ferns, we have already discussed how the composition breaks the rules. How does it use directional lines, shade, and shadow to guide the eye to tell a story and create atmosphere? Pause to give yourself time to reflect on the answer, and then begin the video once again to bring our talk to a conclusion.